successive fast whole bows without having your bow doing a whole bunch of unwanted skittering and bouncing while you were doing it. From my experience teaching, this is one of the biggest problems that especially older or adult beginners have, and today I'm going to tell you why unwanted bow bouncing and skittering happens, very often even when doing slow long bows, and because I'm such a nice guy, I'm going to tell you how you can fix it. Most people pay me to tell them how to do that. Anyway, I'm Tobias Murphy, and this is Murphy Music Academy. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way first, because I have teaching to do. So like and subscribe. Just just do it right now. Trust me, you 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 will thank me for it later. No. Also, comment. Wait until after you watch the video before you comment, because you know don't be like the guy who commented on my shoulder rest video and was complaining about things that I actually addressed in the second half of the video. Don't be that guy. Also, maybe you decide you actually do want to pay me to tell you how to fix your specific violin technique problems because even though all of the general information I give on this channel, I stand by it 100%, most people need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one work to really learn how to play the violin well and correctly. So if that is something you're interested in, you can contact me, either fill out the form at my website, murphymusicacademy.org, link will be in the description below, or email me at admin at murphymusicacademy.org. Org. The first lesson is free, so you don't really have a reason to not try it out. Now, back to the subject at hand, bow skittering, especially when you're trying to play either fast long bows or sometimes just even any long bow in general, or anytime you get a little bit too close to the frog, is an incredibly common problem. And even a problem not just for beginners, but also I remember I was struggling with this and certain things when I was doing my time at conservatory. As a matter of fact, this is such a long-standing issue that it's even addressed in Carl Flesch's book on the art of violin playing, where he talks about how so many violinists of his day, which would have been late 1800s or so, used to avoid playing at the frog because they just felt like they had no real control over it. Even after I had gone through masters and into postgraduate degree at very, very good music schools, I still had problems with this aspect of bowing. And I finally, just about four or five years ago, just decided I was going to sit down and I was going to not stop until I figured out exactly how to make the bow work, no matter what part of the bow I was playing in. And what happened to be the source of all of my bowing woes? It turned out to be something that was actually addressed back when I was very, very young, but nobody had bothered to really keep up with it, especially not as it pertained to playing at an advanced level. And that refers to the muscle involved in doing this. I've mentioned this in videos before, but there is a very large muscle on your back and into your neck that also stretches into your shoulders called the trapezius muscle, which you can see right here. Now, outside of the violin, the trapezius muscle fulfills some important functions, the first of which is giving the appearance of being yoked. The other function is to provide you with the typical reaction you give whenever your teacher asks you why you didn't practice very much this week. So you didn't practice at all? No, no, I'm, I'm very busy. You're 10 years old, what keeps you so busy? I don't know, I'm just busy. Now, while shrugging can be very helpful when you're trying to lift heavy stuff or when you're trying to figure out how to navigate an awkward situation, it is one of the biggest problems when it comes to violin technique. Now, most of our teachers talk to us about not raising our shoulders in reference to the left side where the violin goes. And even if you play with a shoulder rest, and I did start with one, they always told us don't raise your shoulder up to the violin. Instead, bring the head down, because that will create a whole lot of tension, which will cause you playing injuries later on. But not enough emphasis was put on how the trapezius muscle affects the bowing, because this is the primary cause of unwanted bouncing in people's bowing. You see, bows are actually designed to have a certain amount of elasticity. They are supposed to bounce when you want them to. If I pick up the bow and drop it onto the strings, it's naturally going to bounce, even if I don't play any notes with it. 
This means that any time you lift the bow off the string at all and let it come back down to the string, even if it's ever so slight, even if the hair doesn't completely come off the string when you lift the bow, when it comes back down, it is going to bounce if you don't have any counteracting movement. And what muscle is the most primed to cause that instability, that lifting of the bow off the string without you even realizing it? Right here. As you might imagine, a lot of adults are carrying a lot of tension in their neck and shoulders, so when they decide one day that they want to try to learn to play the violin, this becomes one of the most common issues that they have to deal with, and many of them have no idea how to fix it. Now that you know the why of your unwanted bouncing, let's talk about the solution. Now before we get started, I do need to make a few caveats, the first of which being if you are coming to this video looking for any type of quick fix or what can I do to just magically change my bow technique, uh, you should either really revise your expectations or stop playing the violin because that's not how this works. Most fundamental technical changes and advancements actually take several months to sometimes years. Now, in the long term, it actually ends up feeling like that actually didn't take as long as I thought because a lot of this stuff ends up building on each other. So you actually go through a period where maybe you don't advance very well because you're building some basic technique and then suddenly you shoot forward because all of that preparation you've put in helps you at that specific time. But if you're working on something like how to do a smooth long bow stroke, well, you are in the beginning stages, and this is something that is going to take some time, and you need to know that up front, and you need to approach it with that attitude. Secondly, let's talk about what the ideal bow stroke should look like. We've talked about the problem, I'm going to tell you about the solution, but before we can get there, I feel like we need to discuss what are we actually going for. We're not just trying to fix a problem, we're trying to create something better. So to start with, what I consider to be the foundation of all good bowing is, can you play from frog, which is here, not here, to tip, which again is here, not here, sometimes you have to tell people that, can you play from frog to tip using only the weight of the bow on an open string and have a completely smooth and even sound, and does your arm essentially move in a two-dimensional manner? It seems incredibly simple, but that is something that often takes people a long time to be able to do, and not too many people can do it that easily. And here's the thing, if you can do that, and anyone can learn to do that, by the way, if you can do that, then all that is left from there is learning how to add weight and take weight away. But starting from that neutral standpoint tells you how to work with your bow rather than trying to force the bow to your will. Force does not work only seduction. So the best way to start learning how to do this is actually not to start at the frog, but to start at the middle. So again, you're going to start with just the violin sitting here on your shoulder, holding it up with your hand. Start in the middle of the bow, make sure you have a nice straight bow, and then what you're going to do, depending on the severity of the tension in your trapezius muscle, is you're going to actively try to push the muscle down, all right? Because the whole idea is that you want the bow to just be sitting on the string, just the pure weight of the bow. If you want to feel what that feels like, you can hold it with two fingers, but don't actually do the stroke with two fingers like this. Just make sure the bow is just kind of dangling, sitting on the string. Sometimes people who have real big problems, you have to almost stretch the neck out right through here. And then the whole idea is just you want to open the arm. Nothing else. Nothing other, no other movements coming from any other part of the arm. We just want to open the elbow. So here we go. Pretty easy. And for most of you, that will be pretty easy to do. You'll have no skittering, you'll have no problems. Occasionally, I do come across a few students that do have a lot of other tensions and they can't even do that. But to start out with, that is what you want to do. You want to start in the middle of the bow and just focus on sometimes not even relaxing, but pushing the shoulder down here, stretching up through here, because this wants to creep up so much that sometimes people have to really get aggressive with it. Stretch out through here. Sometimes I have people actually play like this, where they look like this when they play, and believe it or not, when they do that, suddenly their bow 
is very smooth. Now, once you can do that, starting from the middle of the bow, of course, the next thing to do is move the starting point down a couple of inches. So you do the same thing. You start a couple of inches lower than the middle. Make sure all of these muscles are quiet and out of the way. Maybe you have to stretch this out again, whatever it takes, and then just open from the arm, playing with only the weight of the bow. And once you get that, again, you just keep moving down a couple of inches until you get to the frog. Now there's one thing that I need to point out, and that is as you get closer to the frog, your big muscles are really, really gonna wanna take over. And you have to resist that, and the best way to resist that is just take a lot more time for setup. So you put the bow on the string, you relax the shoulder, you just let the bow sit there, get comfortable with it sitting there, relax, stretch out whatever it takes, and then just, when you're ready, just pull the stroke. Now, once you get to the frog, there's something I do need to point out, and that is, when I say you get to play with just the weight of the bow, for a lot of you, that will actually sound okay at the frog, but for a lot of you, it's also going to scratch a little bit at the frog, and I want you to let it scratch. I would prefer that you got used to just letting the weight of the bow play and having it scratch a little bit at the frog rather than panicking and going back to trying to pick the bow up with your big arm muscles. You actually kind of need to get used to allowing the bow to just sit there and to scratch a little bit before you learn how to fix the scratch, which I'm going to tell you how to do in the next frame. So there's this little bow hand exercise that is incredibly important, not just for teaching flexibility in the fingers, but also is incredibly important in the actual art of bowing, because this, just contracting the fingers gently while holding the bow, is one of the most important aspects of learning how to have a smooth bow and how to have a proper approach to the bow at the frog. Now, I don't have time to go into how to do this properly. There are other people that have done good tutorials on this, so you can either ask your teacher, hire a teacher, or go search that out for yourself. But basically it is just this, if you take a nice natural hand shape, which is what your bow hold should look like anyway, and just do a nice in and out with the fingers, making sure that the tips of the fingers essentially stay pointed in the same direction. So don't do this, but just do that while holding the bow. And you should probably start with the tip up because unless your fingers are, all, are already really strong, this is going to be uh, very difficult to do it with the bow sideways. This is how you are going to regulate the weight of the bow at the frog. So the idea of having proper bowing technique is that your arm is what I call settled. So obviously the trapezius muscle is settled, but even the muscles from here to the elbow kind of just need to have a place where they feel like they just sit. Now obviously real sitting would be, you know, kind of sitting against your side, but we don't want to do that. But you do want to find a place where it's just comfortable for everything from elbow to shoulder, kind of just stays in the same place, and the rest of the arm moves in a two-dimensional manner. Now when you get to the frog, this is where this motion of the fingers comes in. Obviously the weight of the bow gets heavier as you cross the balance point and then is at its heaviest when you get to the frog. So what you're going to need to learn how to do is actually regulate that weight using your fingers and not your arm. This way, your arm learns to just do this very simple, uninterrupted motion, which doesn't cause any bouncing or skittering at all, and then just the finesse of the fingers allows you to control the weight of the bow, so you end up with a nice, beautiful, smooth, and settled sound. Now, finding exactly how much to move with your fingers will take some experimentation. And here's the thing, you're actually not going to be able to see the fingers really move that much. I know a lot of you have seen some old players, or usually not old players, but people thinking they're imitating old players, do this at the frog. Don't do that. Most of the time, it looks cool, but most of the time it actually sounds really bad. It makes people do unnecessary accents and does not actually cause any real advantage for the player. What most people think they are imitating when they do this is people that have very strong, very flexible, and very responsive fingers naturally reacting to the just two-dimensional arm movement at the frog. They're not actually trying to make this kind of weird snaky motion, their fingers just naturally react a little bit like this, and if you watch some older videos you're going to notice 
the motion is actually very, very small. It's not aggressive, as you see some players do. And your hand might end up looking that way if you develop nice, strong, and flexible, and relaxed fingers. Anyway, back to controlling the bow with the frog, you are going to have to do just a little bit of experimentation feeling just how much little bit of picking up, actually picking up the bow a little bit here at the frog with the fingers, you're going to need to do just to soften out that weight a little bit. And of course, you're gonna to have to figure out how to transfer the weight from here down to the balance point, down to the rest of the bow where you don't need to worry about it anymore. And that will just take a lot of trial and error. Once you get the hang of this, then it is time to practice doing both down and up bows. Now, up bows are pretty easy, but the thing with up bows is you have to make sure that if you can start from here, and a lot of people figure out how to play a smooth longbow starting from the frog going to the tip, you have to make sure that as you're getting closer to the balance point to the frog, you get yourself back to the position that you started. It's very common for people when they get to here in an up bow, they actually start to raise their shoulder again a little bit instead of doing a mirror image of what they did when they were doing a down bow. Once you can do a completely smooth long bow on any string going from frog to tip to tip to frog using only the weight of the bow, then basically you have the foundation of all solid bowing technique and sound production. And though it's not going to immediately translate into your music, you might still have a little bit of bouncing here and there. You now have the foundation and the reference point to what good proper bowing sounds like. And you're going to want to try to make every bow you make essentially a microcosm of that longbow. So you can think to yourself, I'm having trouble when I play this piece, I'm doing this thing in the middle and the bow's bouncing a little bit. Well, you have to think to yourself, what was my arm doing in the longbow? And try in that particular part of the bow and then try to mimic that in your pieces. Do this for a few more years and then maybe add some other bowing exercises that teach you how to distribute weight and pressure in different parts of the bows and you will no longer have any trouble with your bow bouncing ever again. And if you do have a little bit of trouble, you'll know what to go back to to fix it. Anyway, I've been Tobias Murphy for Murphy Music Academy, telling you there is no pleasure in mediocrity, so it's worth taking those extra two to three years to learn how to do this 100% properly. Though the longbow thing usually only takes people a few months. Anyway, happy practicing, and I'll see you next time.